Today, it's going to be another nice one. Today, we are going to have a look at another really nice one. Today, it's all about Be Quiet's Shadow Rock 3. Mm -hmm. So this is the Shadow Rock 3 out of Be Quiet's, not premium, but like middle ground line where everything is called Shadow something. But don't even start to think that this is not as Be Quiet as their Dark Rock series. And we will see exactly why. But before, let's have a closer look at this one. Out of the box, we'll get the usual. A big ass heatsink, a fan, a ton of mounting hardware for internet AMD, a separate set of fan mounting clips in case you want to tune that thing after the fact, a tube of thermal paste, and the notorious absolute best screwdriver in the goddamn freaking world, the Be Quiet Phillips head. Not only will it follow you along for the rest of your life, but you will also get one of many Be Quiet coolers for free when you purchase one. The fan in question is one of Be Quiet Shadow Wing 2 PVM high speed. However, the fan is kind of unavailable. Uh, outside of the scope of this cooler or a cooler like this, the only available Shadow Wing 2 are the regular 120 and 120 PVM, uh, which are spinning at 1100 RPM and the fan here is spinning at 1600 RPM. Um, that's unfortunate and I'm unable to find out anything more except for that 1600 RPM. Yeah. To power it, there is a PVM connection and the cable is about 22 centimeters long. Ignoring that little hiccup, let's go to that massive, massive heatsink. By using five copper direct touch heat pipes, the Shadow Rock 3 is transporting all of that heat up that one massive aluminum heatsink, which is about 163 millimeters high. The top of the heatsink is covered in another big aluminum plate with a bit of back paint and a representative Be Quiet logo. The heatsink on its own is really interesting though. Putting a Dark Rock 4 next to it, it, it's kind of interesting to see that the Shadow Rock 3 is massively bigger, but at the same time, its fins are not even remotely as close to each other. To be exact, the Shadow Rock 3 comes in at only 30 fins, while the Dark Rock 4 has a total of 51 fins. Adding to that, the Shadow Rock 3 is 4 millimeters higher, and the difference in fin density can clearly be seen with the naked eye, although this does not necessarily translate into bad performance, but we will see about that. On the compatibility end, for Intel, the Shadow Rock 3 can be installed on top of an LGA 1200, every 1150, 2011-3, and 2066. For the people who get one which was produced somewhere around March or later, there will be also a LGA a 1700 socket included as well, like on mine. On AMD's side, we are looking at AM4 sockets only. In order to get the cooler on there, on LGA 1700, 1200 or 1150s, we first need to take the provided backplate and shove the Intel screws through the appropriate hole and fixate them on the other side by using the washer. After placing the backplate behind your motherboard, we can screw down the backplate by using the double-sided nuts. From there, we can take the Intel mounting brackets, just make sure that you take the right ones, because there are special ones for LGA 1700, and while positioning them with the ends pointing towards the CPU, we can mount them down using the provided screws. Over on Team AMD, it's a bit easier. First, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with some of these spacers. Then, after positioning the AMD brackets on there with the ends pointing towards the CPU, we can screw them down using the longer AMD screws. From here, it's the usual be quiet thing. Position that annoying bridge perfectly straight on top of the base, splash some thermal paste on top of the chip, let the cooler sink down on the CPU in a 100% and I mean 100% accurate movement, fuck it up, be annoyed, yell a bit, try it again, do it right this time and screw it down with one screw on the right side and the other one through the heatsink. The, on the whole process, um, two things. First off, uh, and I said that before, this is bullshit. Why is this not permanently fixed on the base with some sort of spring in the center? Uh, please, just finally do it. And then can someone please explain to me why there is nothing to cover this damn hole? Like, that cooler has a freaking glory hole on the top. What gives? I get that this is the, the, the mainstream line and uh, the screwable hole hiders are reserved for things like the dark rocks, uh, but you could give that poor thing like a, a piece of rubber just to hide that hole, anything. A, a sticker would have made it. Anyway, ignoring the, the natural urge to make weird comments about the hole, let's get to the benchmarks cause this thing is so freaking interesting. While letting the Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3's fan spin at 100% of its 1600 RPM, the Shadow Rock 3 
managed to keep the 3900X at 54 degrees C, 54. That means that the mainstream line was able to get the exact same result as the premium line counterpart. Absolutely freaking amazing and kind of bad for Be Quiet's own cooler as they are now basically competing with each other. But not really though. As mentioned in the beginning, the Shadow Rocks heatsink is freaking massive. And don't get me wrong, I love that and I love that how it looks aesthetically, that's amazing. However, the Dark Road 4 is basically a more compact version and this compression means that the Dark Road 4 will generally be more compatible with systems out there. Not only because of its 159mm height compared to the Shadow Rocks 163, but also just based on thickness. On the bright side, however, none of them are protruding above the RAM slots, so 100% RAM compatibility is basically for both of them. Now, to get back on the A versus B. By spec, the Shadow Rock 3 is rated to be usable at up to 190 watts TDP, whereas the Dark Rock 4 is meant for up to 200 watts TDP. In our test, at roughly 130 watts of thermal output, the difference between the two is basically zero, and probably at some point way higher, like if you would use, for example, a 12900K, the Dark Rock 4 will start to take the lead. But for our 3900X test, the two stayed at exactly the same level, at least for max performance. But it's at Noise 2 performance where we will start to see why the Dark Rock 4 is considered to be the premium one. While both of them started at exactly the same level, the Dark Rock 4 immediately dropped down a decibel and kept its smaller yet noticeable difference to the Shadow Rock 3. Something that did not make a lot of sense to me, however, is the starting point. Both of them started at exactly the same noise level, where officially, from Be Quiet's end, the Shadow Wing 2 should be quite a bit louder. Be quiet, a bit louder. Be quiet, a bit, a bit louder. Yeah, sorry. Going back to the noise to performance graph, ignoring the dark rock for a second, there is just nothing that comes even close to this insane noise to performance ratio of a single tower cooler like this one. The closest comparison would be an Arctic Freezer 34, which, although a tiny bit cooler, gets completely annihilated if you are not deaf. And we have not even talked about something like a Gilly Tranquilo 5. That's that's just not a comparison. Though way smaller heatsink, but it's the big heatsink that makes this what it is. So overall, in my opinion, this is so a freakishly interesting cooler. The best way I could describe it is that it is basically an uncompressed version of this, which works a bit less efficient in both cooling and at noise, but it is still very, very close to it. But that doesn't mean that the uncompressed version is not a, a great option. As long as you can take the the way bigger heatsink at its 163 millimeters, and you are happy with the, the silver design and uh, the, the, the glory hole, there is nothing wrong with going with for this in, in comparison to a dark rock. If you have something like a Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5, 5800X uh, or below, or 12700K or below, this will be perfect and you will see no difference to a dark rock 4. The only thing that I would like to see changed at some point is if, if they could, you know, like, I cover this dirty hole. And of course, please, please, for the love of God, fix this piece of It just falls off way too often and that's an issue. So where does this leave us? Um, I love this thing, not even from a design side, cause that's also a thing for me, but also from, from a noise perspective. Cause I, I don't know if it's like the type of noise cause many different fans make like different kinds of, of, of sound, like um, like in, in terms of frequency. But when I was hitting 100% PVM, nothing. I'm sitting like a meter away from my, my test bench usually, nothing. I I didn't, didn't notice it at all. On the price side, things are also quite interesting. At 44 euros right now in Europe, this uncompressed Be Quiet cooler is priced a full 15 euros less than its premium Dark Rock 4 counterpart. And I think that's an amazing price. And even compared to things like an Arctic Freezer 34, it's still priced very competitively. So if you're looking for a sub 50 euro cooler and you're looking for the, the quietest cooler out there that can do a, a heavy duty job, 
Uh, well, here it is, the Shutterbug 3. On a side note, I will also use this cooler later today for a like a Be Quiet Focus build, and I will try to cool a 12900K on it. Uh, so we will see if the 190 watts TDP can handle that. But that's for a different video. But this should be then it for the Shadow Rock 3. At this point, a big thank you to Be Quiet for sending it over. And if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4 that we just reference all across this video. On a side note, we also have a Discord server now, so if you want to join and complain about the glory hole of your cooler, uh, yeah, well, that's the place to be. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.